Hey, bud. Where are you going? What's with the makeup? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to take the Alita Battle Angel Challenge. <laughs> I heard from uh, some angry white men on the internet that I shouldn't go see the movie with Captain Marvel this weekend. I should go see Alita Battle Angel, the movie directed by uh, visionary film director Robert Rodriguez, in theaters now. But Zack... In the 1960s, when Marvel started using their character, Captain Marvel, as their Kree alien superhero, after trademarking the name, DC had to change their character, Captain Marvel, in 1972 to instead use his name, his transformation cry, Shazam. <laughs> well, it looks like the Alita Battle Angel Challenge may not have done as well as fans were hoping. Alita Battle Angel only made $85 million domestically. Whereas Captain Marvel, the movie by Marvel Studios, made $359 million. Not to be confused with the movie Shazam by DC, in theaters now. Alita Battle Angel is no longer in theaters. What do you know? <laughs> well, I'm gonna go wash the sriracha off my face. <laughs> Hi, uh, welcome to Double Feature, a show where we will review many superhero movies. Many year. superhero movies, just like this one. At least... At least eight. Eight more? Ten more? That's how many are coming out this year. So maybe like 15 more for me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we just watched a movie called Shazam! 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 Uh, not yeah. the movie with Shaq. I wish it was. Not the fictional movie with Sinbad. Mm -mm. Um, what else? Not a cleaning product. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's another joke in there somewhere. Um, cereal. Is there a cereal? I don't know. Shazam sounds like maybe okay. a cereal. Okay, not a cereal from the 80s that was discontinued. Uh-huh. Uh, alright. That's, uh... Alright, so the bit joke's over. Joke's over. On to the... Skip On right here sk hey, for the review. Hey, skip right here, uh, to this time code to see our review if you don't like right humor. Here. And... Shazam is a 2019 <laughs> film starring Zachary Levi as a superhero who, under some wild circumstances, is granted all the powers of Zeus, Hades, and the gang. Zach, what did you think of Spider-Man Homecoming? Oh my god, that's totally... Ugh. We'll get into that. I am struggling a lot with this movie, legitimately, because I I think I've finally come to the conclusion I don't like it, but it's a DC film, and I don't hate it, so that's an accomplishment. Like, I'm not, I'm not angry about the movie, like... Like you a could lot say, of DC movies are Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, but this one is a uh, number one on the on the list of the this new universe of DC movies. I mean, like I said, that means almost nothing. Right. Well, I wanted to ask you before I give my thoughts. How familiar are you with the comics of uh, Shazam and the Gang? At all. Right. I'm right there with you. I'm more familiar with like Marvel stuff, but DC is kind of like such a gray area besides like Batman to me I know a lot of DC st like I know Batman too uh, but I know a lot of DC stuff because I was big into the like cartoons right like, I was going to say I, the only cartoon I was really super into was uh, the Batman one really the original Batman one uh, and I've seen Shazam I mean he appeared in uh, the Flashpoint Paradox movie which I saw funny enough my first my first uh, 
exposure to Shazam was in uh, the video game Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. Wow. Which there are a few references to Mortal Kombat in this movie, and uh huh, got to keep it in the family. Hey, you know what? But yeah, that was my like. I don't know a lot about Shazam. That was my first like exposure to him, and like I don't know a lot about the comics. I've watched a lot of Batman the Animated Series. Going into this movie, I didn't know anything. Like this isn't like, or I think that there were people in the theater that was like, that were like, oh my god, it's that thing, it's that thing, like in Marvel movies. But I was so blind to any of that. I don't know if that's true. I mean, we'll get into it. But like, what did you think though? I'm scared to say. You're gonna hit me. Oh, you liked it, didn't you? I thought it was good, just good, just good. Uh, but this one was funny. Uh, it was a, a superhero origin story, so it was very cliche. It did all of the beats of a superhero origin story movie that we expect? Maybe but, a little too many beats. Yeah, but it was uh, playing around with the formula a little bit. I thought that uh, it was a lot of fun seeing like. Uh, they're testing all the superhero powers. Like it's in this movie, it's like this is a fourteen-year-old kid who gets superpowers and he acts like one. Like yeah. I knew that fourteen-year-old kid. Like he's trying to buy beer because he looks like an adult now. He's uh, going into strip clubs. He's stealing money from uh, ATMs because he could zap them with electricity. Right. So he's being like a little terror. Uh, so I thought that that was fun subversion of the superhero origin. Yeah, I mean, I I don't like I said I don't. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a hater because all of that stuff I really enjoyed, legitimately. I think uh, everything with Zachary Levi, I was so into. Um, Even the kid, he was a good actor. The the kid who played who? The young Zachary Levi. Like oh, I didn't like Benny. Him. What's his name? Benny the Cab. Billy. Okay. But uh, I liked all the testing power stuff. I thought that stuff was the best part of the movie. Sure. In fact, I think that stuff was all in the trailers. Sure. And the tr- like the trailers made it seem to me personally like a little bit of a different movie. Right, cuz you get like one glimpse of the villain in the trailer. Yeah. But just like every other superhero origin, half the movie is the villain growing and growing and then fighting and then the climax that's 30 minutes of destroying things. Well, I feel like there's just so much setup, unnecessary setup for this movie. Why? Well, okay, so the the movie opens. I'm not going to do like any giant spoilers, but okay. there is like a long 15 minute sequence um, where it's kind of like setting up the villain. At the very beginning? Yes, at the very beginning. Okay. And uh, I felt like all of that was unnecessary. And then again, like right after that happens, we have more setup. And then there's like a flashback, like two minutes after that. It's like information overload for me. It was like just too much. It was like they're just throwing too much at me. Um, and then even after that, uh, the villain is like gaining his powers. And then we see like another 20 minute se- sequence where, okay, he's gaining his powers. It's like this is too much setup for what I think should be a very simple kind of plot. I think if this movie was simpler, if it was like 30 minutes shorter, it would have been a great movie. Well... Legitimately. Because it, they're setting up this villain, right? They're uh-huh. doing all this stuff to set up this villain. But this movie did not need, like, a complex villain. Which it wasn't. It wasn't a complex right. villain at all. It was kind of like evil Shazam. Just like every other superhero movie is evil Spider-Man, evil Batman, evil Iron Man. Well, he had some weird powers, and I'm sure we're going to talk about him. But, um... I honestly think the stakes should have been lowered. I think he should have... It should have been just some, like guy wanting money, you know, or just some guy trying to rob a bank or do, right. do something sinister. But instead but, it was like an end of the world plot like they always yeah. do. I, I agree that the villain was a little much. I thought that it was fun, like towards the end I thought it was fun that the villain was this over serious uh, superhero villain who is going to destroy everything but then Shazam is on the other end like just having a good time like he realizes how powerful he is, he's like messing with the guy, he... Uh, we get a funny bit where they're really far away and they're having the show they're having a showdown uh-huh. and the villain is giving his like speech like I'm gonna destroy everything you don't understand like but then he's so far away that Shazam can't hear him and he's like what yeah are you, what are you saying I, I like that scene so a lot. it's like that where it was fun having that dark of a villain to contradict but I will say this movie was so tonally out of like it was everywhere um, yeah like 
you'll have a, you said it keeps cutting back to long scenes with the villain who is like s- actually murdering people summons the power of the devil and has <laughs> has his brother thrown out of a skyscraper uh, has co-workers heads bitten off on screen this movie is so gruesome he has his uh, lab assistant touch a door to help him do something or she's like this door's not gonna do anything he, she and touches the door the Indiana Jones Last Crusade thing happens where yeah and it's all yeah. on everything on every gruesome bit of this movie is on screen she just melts and deteriorates into like dust and just becomes a pile of dust right in front of him yeah and then it cuts straight back to Shazam doing the floss and like He's just hanging out with his disabled friend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so tonally everywhere. And it works at the end. It works uh, when he finally fights the villain. Um, and his toenail fungus monsters that he has. His toenail fungus monsters. Who? His toenail fungus commercial. Space Jam yeah. have an ass. They all look like the Monstars. They did look like the Monstars, um, yeah. But unlike the Monstars, they were all really boring to look at. I thought that this is like every other DC movie. Yeah, where it's creepy. They have in. to fight. They have to fight a fucking giant CGI monster at the end. But it's every C- every uh, DC movie is creeping into this one. This one was doing its own thing completely. But then giant gray monsters who take up the entire screen have to show up. Yeah. What I thought was like, I didn't read the comics at all. So everything that everything in this movie that was weird to me, uh, I kind of excused from being in the comics. Like, uh, he summons the power of the seven deadly sins, which are seven different, like, demons. Yeah. And they all are gray monsters with red eyes. And when they're all on screen together, which happens a lot, it just looks like a rat king. Yeah. A monster, like, just ball of monsters. And I thought it would be more fun if, like, each of them was, like, a different color, like the monsters, or if they all were, like... Or they all were, like, played by actual actors. Right, and they have, like, no personalities yeah. at all. They just, like, kind of, uh, like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, none Stuff of them like are, that. like, have a unique thing about right. them. Right, and if for it being the Seven Deadly Sins, you know, Winnie the Pooh did it well. Uh, <laughs> give them each a fun personality. Yeah. Even if they only have, like, one or two lines each. Sure. Uh, Gluttony is the most disgusting one in the movie. Uh-huh. He turns into a giant, like, tooth monster. Like uh-huh. the movie Teeth, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, I can see it. Um, but yeah, like the, they are, they show up a lot in this movie, but they are such minor characters. Like they get, they are the henchmen of the villain and they get fought at the end, but that's pretty much it. That's not the only thing in this movie I feel like doesn't work for me. I feel like, um, you know, I, I really don't want to compare this to Marvel movies, because I'm not even, like, the biggest Marvel movie fan, to be honest with you. Like, I um, I enjoy the Marvel movies, and I think they're well-made. And I think the difference between m- the Marvel movies is I'm just bored. I'm just bored with Marvel movies a lot. Um, and But I can recognize, okay, hey, they're well-made movies. They know what they're doing. But this, I felt like it was trying to hit so many different things. Um, and some of them, like, it was just trying to keep up with Marvel. Like, there's a lot of humor in this movie, and some of it yeah. doesn't land quite as well. Really? I thought it all um, came across. Really? I thought all the humor came came through. I mean, a lot of the... There's child actors in this movie. Right. The two lead child actors are not awful. I do think that the guy, the kid who plays Billy... He's not the worst, um, but my issue with him is that he kind of does not read to me as the same character as Zachary Levi. Right, 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 right. Because um, the Billy, when he's a kid, is kind of like this, like too cool, uh, acts older than his age, surrounded by morons, kind of kid who like breaks the law and is snarky, and then he turns into Zachary Levi, who is playing a goofball. He is playing. Uh, uh, Tom Hanks from Big. Yes, like a big. Goofy. There's references to that There's movie, a few which references are to Big. Fantastic, I like um, that. Yeah, but Zachary Levi is playing like this big goofy, like well, I'm a I'm a kid. I don't know what to do. Yeah, like stuff like that, which Billy as a kid he would not, never. Yeah. Um, but that's that's what happens when it's just two different actors. Like in in the movie Big, you see him as a kid for five minutes, and then it's Tom Hanks for the rest of the movie, and you don't you don't think about it. 
But I think that movie, should have been this movie too. I think he shouldn't have used Shazam powers until it, he shouldn't have said Shazam and turned back into regular Billy until the end of the movie. No, because there's a lot of fun parts with regular Billy. Like he's got his he's got a subplot where he's trying to find his family. He's got a subplot where he's trying to get along with his father. I hate family. the subplot where he's trying to find his family. I actually trying to find hate his family. It. Yes. Go where ahead. He's trying to find his mom. I thought it was uh, inoffensive. Go ahead. I just thought, why does this need to be in this movie? There's like it's so many flash. I don't think so. Okay. There's so many flashbacks to this like moment, and it's supposed to be this big, you know, important thing. And I just, I, I feel like that should not have been included. It should have just been like. Okay, Billy is uh, just a like a kind of delinquent kid, and you know he meets this foster family, and he kind of you know he's in he's invited into this family, but he's he, you know he thinks he's too good for it or something like that, <clears throat> and I then think, at the end he kind of figures it out. I don't think we we needed to ever see his. I mom. think that the the family the foster family in this movie is such an uh, important part where um, by the end you want him to be like part of the family, you want him to get along. And I think that if there wasn't the subplot with his uh, real family, um, by the end of this movie, he'd be a superhero. He'd be helping people, but he wouldn't care about his uh, immediate family the way that we want him to. So uh, I think that the plot there's a subplot where it's not much of a spoiler because it's right at the beginning of the movie. He is trying to find his real mom because he got lost when he was like three years old, four yeah. years old. And um, just like any teenager... He doesn't know what's right in front of him. He's trying to, he keeps trying to find his real mom who, you know, at this point, like, how has he not been found? How is his uh, real mom? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Right, it doesn't. At all. But to but. a teenager, it's like, well, she must be looking for me. I'm looking for her. She must be looking for me. So, um, so that, I think that that plot uh, really helped the, his character become more of a, uh, focused on his new family, his yeah. new foster family. It doesn't take up too much of the movie. But what I'll say is I think that the foster family was also an issue. I felt like they needed to be in it more or they needed to be in it much less. No, I thought they were in it. They were in it a lot. And well, I thought it was good. I good don't amount. think they were in, in it. Enough? Well, depending on what they were trying to do. Because I think what this movie was really trying to do was trying to build up the relationship between Freddy and Billy. Right? That, I think that's the number one yeah. thing that they're trying to do. But then, at the end, it's like they... All the family is important. Like, the entire family is important in the way that... If you were building it up, they all should have right. been that instead right, 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 of right. just Freddy and just Billy. All the family members at the end have a moment. Like, they all have their redemption. They all have their moment with Billy. And it's kind of like half these characters didn't even interact with Billy. Yeah. I, I think that... There's some interesting ideas that maybe they should have saved for the sequel. You uh, think there, you think there's going to be a sequel? Depending on how well this does. I think that no matter how well this movie does, they don't have plans. Why don't we just talk about spoilers a little bit? We're going to have spoiler, huh? Yeah. So everybody skip right. Wait. Okay. Oh. Skip right here for oh. spoilers. Right here in this little one. Here it goes. Wow. Oh, there it goes. Goodbye. All right. Pick that up. Oh, spoilers. So, I'm going to just jump right into it. I think that family turning into a bunch of different Shazams should not have been in the movie. I think that should have been, like I said, save for the sequel. I think this movie should have focused on just the singular idea of this single character turning into a superhero. Versus, we're going to have th this entire cast of characters who we don't really know right. turn into superheroes. Did you do any research on this story? I did a little bit. Is that part of... Is that Did that need to be in this? It's not a big part of it. Uh, I know that... The, so one of the girls, Mary, she's mm -hmm. like the college-age girl. She's about to go to college. Mm -hmm. She turns into Mary Marvel, who's like a sidekick to Shazam. Freddy... Uh, Marvel, that's also his, he ha he has a thing like that he, where he has a blue costume, and these other characters, which by the way, was spoiled for us probably five yeah. minutes before we got into. Well, the not movie. just five minutes before, but everywhere you looked, um, there are just uh, merchandise and toys and everything about 
here's a Shazam toy, but then also a blue one and a gray one and a girl one and a purple one. It's like, who are these characters? And we were walking into the movie theater and I looked over and there were Funko Pops sitting on the counter of every single character. I was like, who yeah. are these characters? Oh, that one's name's Freddy. I know Freddy's the little disabled kid, so I guess he turns into a Shazam. Well, there was one at Target, too, of like him in the blue outfit, and I was like, okay, I guess that's happening in this movie. Because it has the name right there, Freddy. Yeah. So, thanks, uh, DC. If you really did, if you really wanted this to be saved for the end, why is it every toy? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, anyways. So, in the comics, what I, I, what I think happens is in... Like an, a single issue, there's they all that all happens. Uh, like they all turn into oh, it's like a one off kind of thing, yes. But like normally, that's it's not it's just, it's just him, it's just Captain Marvel, right? And not to be confused, not to be because this one smiles, yeah. So to me, I feel like if we're gonna if you're gonna do that, that's something I think you save for another movie, that's something I think you save for the next one. Um, because I think you can still have the family moment of like, oh, we're going to fight the bad guys. Right. But it's going to be them like throwing pots and pans at them. Right. And stuff. Which they were doing in the movie. They could have just left it at that. Yeah. I don't think they needed big Power Ranger suits, but... They did look like the Power Rangers. And even uh, throughout... Down to the emblem. Well, the other spoiler I wanted to talk about is... The very ending. The very ending? Yes. Like okay. the last two minutes of uh-huh. the movie. Um, Superman showing up in the last two seconds of the That upset film. you? Well, it just made me feel like, okay, DC does not have any idea what they're fucking doing. No, it's... I think that... Because why would you... <laughs> I just don't know why would you include that. Like, it doesn't make any sense for Shazam to know Superman... Well, he's saving the city. The Justice League, I'm sure, has heard about Shazam at this point because okay. he's saving the city constantly. Hater. Next. Okay. Well, I just felt like showing Batman and Wonder Woman and Aquaman, I it's like... Like throughout the movie or, or at no, the No, at the very end okay. in, the, in the Spider-Man Homecoming credits. Right. The Spider-Man Homecoming credits because Shazam does the very original thing where... Uh, there's the grand reveal at the very end, hard cut to uh, drawings on a notebook behind um, Ramon's. Ramon's song. Yeah. It might as well have been Blitzkrieg Bop. Yeah, honestly. Um, and I I think if you compare this movie to Spider-Man Homecoming, I think Spider-Man Homecoming is not a better movie, because I don't even like Spider-Man Homecoming, <gasps> but I feel like... That's a good movie. But I think that in terms of how the plot is set up, it's... It, it, there's not a whole lot of fat to Spider-Man Homecoming. Right. But there is a lot of fat to this movie. Well, I mean, you've seen all the other DC movies. The other DC movies are 90% fat. Yeah. Batman, uh, Man of Steel is setting up this and that or whatever. Batman vs. Superman is setting up the Justice League. The Justice League has all these side plots. So all their movies are so uh, terribly put together. And I thought that this one was tight enough that I can excuse the, the fat. I think we've said plenty about this movie. Yeah, uh, there's not a whole lot that still you, needs to be said, I think. Do you think you can recommend this movie? No. There's some fun stuff in it. Like, I don't hate the movie, but just... Just go watch Big. Like, I, I, honestly, like... I just think that that's a better thing. Or just... It's so it's so much of an amal- amalgamation between different movies. It feels like a, a mix between Kick-Ass and Big. To me. And I just think that those movies are kind of better. Sure. So... No, Kick-Ass is, is, is a whole different kind of movie, I think. Really? I think it's a lot more violent and it's kind of darker. This movie is not dark besides the villains. Well, it's a lot of the social media stuff that is kind of big in this movie. Big? Like the movie Big? When... <laughs> are you thinking of Little? Yeah, Little with... I, name an actor in that movie. <laughs> uh, name an actor in Little. Okay. Well, <laughs> I know Tiffany Haddish. She's not in that. She. I know she's not in it. Okay. Uh, I'd say check this movie out if you're a fan of superhero movies. Uh, it's very much just like every other superhero origin story, but it's got a lot of comedy. 
It's got a lot of uh, fun gags against the superhero uh, formula. I just think that there's there's so much unnecessary stuff, and then the movie felt so fucking long too. I didn't think so. I felt like it, I was in there for. I kept I kept wanting the movie to end. I was like, okay, now we can end it. Now we're at the final place. Now we can end this movie. Just kept going and going and going. I felt like I was in there for four hours. If you're a fan of, well, I recommend it to those people, but if you're a fan of the DC Universe movies, if you like Man of Steel, if you like Batman vs. Superman, if you like Suicide Squad, if you like Wonder Woman and Aquaman, I have no idea why you like those movies, and I don't know if you'll like this one, because this movie is not, it's so tonally different than those movies. But um, if you like those movies, I don't know what's wrong with you, but... I think at this point, you're, there's not a chance you're going to catch up to Marvel. Anything you do at this point, unless you do totally clean slate, I think is not going to work. Yeah, um, you need to stop trying to make a universe. Just, yes. like, just make a movie and stop worrying. Like, DC just out the gate was like, we're going to make 20 movies, and they're all going to tie together, and it's just been a, a mess. Are you saying that, like, cinematic universes sometimes don't work wait a second cinematic universes that's... sometimes don't are you work. saying that like ghost core uh the uh-huh. the ghost buster ghost cinematic Busters universe, universe yeah. isn't you're saying that that's not a I good idea might, i think they might not be doing that anymore um what wait, about the like dark the dark universe oh the, the dark, dark universe the dark universe remember that that promotion no that's picture? still happening right well, remember that promotional picture with all the cast of the Dark Universe movies? Uh-huh. And none of those movies are going to get made now. Well, you don't think no. the Johnny Depp uh, Invisible Man movies? No, get unless in- he turns into an actual Invisible Man. Because oh. Johnny Depp, watch out. I don't need to see that movie because I can just look at nothing. Uh, that's kind of fun. Uh-huh. That's a fun joke. Yeah, that was just a little <clears throat> invisible humor. On that note, that's the end of that. Don't go see this. Fuck it. Don't see it. We're going to go try to be Shazam now. Yeah. Shazam! All right, Christian. Let's do this. Shazam! Man, this didn't work. I hate this! What did I expect? It's just same old me.